Good morning, everyone. Yes, I am on. Do sit down for a moment. Let me just sort out my microphone. Got the keys in the pocket and they're creating too much uh, interference. Well, welcome to our worship this morning, either here in church or online on Facebook. It's, um, or if you join us later, you're still welcome. So it's good to see you all today. And um, we're going to start the service with uh, a slightly different thing, because um, we're going to be doing, at the beginning of our service now, the swearing in of church wardens. Um, this is a legal um, requirement following our annual meeting last week, where Sandra and Ian were both re-elected as church wardens, and our grateful thanks go to them for the wonderful job they do and for agreeing to continue in that role. And usually, then uh, they would, all the church wardens in Leeds would have to go to a special service with the archdeacon where this would happen. And uh, because this year is rather different, the, uh, it's happening in the local churches, which means that you, and you get to see it and we did it at the earlier service as well so they are going to be completely well and truly signed in after both these services today so let's begin with that today so Sandra and Ian if you'd like to resume your positions here at the front and I'll find the right bit of paper and then just as we do that um, Actually, if you could both stand over that side for the moment, um, I think there's space to stand that far apart, then I can swivel this around. So first of all, let me swivel it around so that everybody can wave, at everybody who's online, and you can all wave back. You are waving online, aren't you, I hope? Yeah, they're definitely waving. We can't see them, but they're definitely waving. And then over here, we have Sandra and Ian. So, um, uh, newly re-elected church wardens. So Sardra and Ian, I'm just going to stand here. Um, church wardens are called to represent the people of God, to work with the leadership of the parish ordained and lay, to be an example and encouragement to their fellow Christians and the wider community, and to promote unity and peace. Ian and Sandra, as you come to be admitted to the office of church warden, I ask you to affirm your commitment to this calling and to seek God's grace and the power of his Holy Spirit to fulfil it. Will you, as church warden, seek to work with the bishop, your incumbent, that's me, the parochial church council, and all those who exercise leadership responsibility in St Mary's Beeston, to further the mission of God and his purposes in the world. I will, the Lord be my helper. Will you undertake your task as a spiritual and holy calling and seeking word and action to promote unity and peace? I will, the Lord be my helper. Will you care for the fabric and property of the church as stewards of God and make it your responsibility to ensure its proper upkeep and repair. I will, the Lord be my helper. May God be your helper, and give you grace to serve him with joy, with humility and with strength. And may your ministry as church warden witness to the gospel of Christ and serve the building up of his kingdom and of his church, now and always. Amen. Amen. And now, Sandra and Ian are going to make their declaration. I solemnly and sincerely declare before God and his people that I will faithfully and diligently discharge the duties of the office of church warden for the parish for which I have been chosen during the period of my appointment. Having heard you make these declarations, I now duly and canonically admit you to the office of church warden. 
here in Beeston, where you serve. As God has called you to this ministry, so he will not fail you. And usually at this point, or probably at this point, I probably shake your hand as well, but obviously I can't do that. But we can give them a round of applause. So. And I noticed that Jenny is with us this morning and Frank is here in church. So can we say a big thank you to Jenny and to Frank for supporting uh, Ian and Sandra in, in, in this role, uh, for allowing them to do it, putting up with their frustrations when they get angry with the vicar or anybody else in church. And um, so thank you to you two as, as well, Jenny and Frank. And thank you, Sandra and Ian. So there you go. That's one of the things which we have to do. And it comes from being part of the established church. Um, so we're governed by canon law. And uh, there we go. So just picking up my bits of paper. Also, oops, there we go. Also this morning, um, following on from our annual meeting last week, I um, sorry, I'm just adjusting. There we go, so I can see you all. So I did say last week I had little bits of paper, blank paper, and just to say if anybody has any questions that they want to raise at any stage about anything that's happening around in church or any comments or things that you think we ought to do or think about, um, as a church, please do, do let me know. I mean, you can always talk to me or email me or anything like that, but um, if you want to write anything down, please do, because we're missing those opportunities to talk to each other over coffee and all the rest. And, yeah, I'm missing them. I know other people are. So, uh, and we would ask those questions and talk about all sorts then. So if there's anything that you want to talk about, or as a church, or, or questions, or comments, or anything, please do send them through. And again, likewise, on Facebook, then, you know, message me, or email, text me, whatever. You're very welcome to do so. I'm just going to do something else at the beginning of this service, because I might forget otherwise, um, because I'll put them down and forget about it. Today, okay, this is a good time of the year for birthdays. And I know that there are uh, two people here, one person in prison and one represented by somebody else who have birthdays um, this week. And one whose birthday is actually today is Matthew's middle one, Gift. Gift is 12 years old today. And I saw a picture of her on Facebook and she looked lovely. And so Matthew, um, will you give Gift our love and a card from us as well? And then, Slightly older <laughs> is Jack. And Jack, you're 90 on Tuesday, I believe. And even with a mask on, you don't look it. And your mind um, is certainly as young as it ever was. And um, uh, uh, you probably won't be able to celebrate it quite in the way that you'd have expected to. And we certainly can't mark it here in church by singing today. Um, and as we might have wanted to celebrate, I'm sure we would. But I love to you as well, and a very happy birthday. So um, I will try to remember to give those to you. Um, in fact, what I will do is I will put these at the front of church here. So please, can you collect them afterwards? Or... Let's turn to our worship here this morning. So today is Bible Sunday, a day when we give thanks for the Bible and remember and celebrate, thank God for it. So our readings and our words reflect that today. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, 
and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Word of God is living and active. It judges the thoughts and intentions of the heart. All is open and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we give account. So let us confess our sins in penitence and faith. Your Word convicts us. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Lord, have mercy. Your word commands us. Repent, believe the good news. Christ, have mercy. Your word assures us. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring you his pardon and peace, now and forever. Amen. Prayer for Bible Sunday. Merciful God, teach us to be faithful in change and uncertainty, that trusting in your word and obeying your will, we may enter the unfailing joy of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We sit for our first reading, which Jack is reading for us today. Whatever you do, with word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, The sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. 
and he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see all these things, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of God, our Creator, Redeemer and Sustainer. Amen. Please sit down. Say, please sit down. I don't know if you stand up during the gospel reading, but uh, we can't see anyway. So. so I have a question for you today um, to think about. And um, it'll be interesting to see what your responses are. Okay. Um, so the question is about how you are feeling at this time. Now, uh, today, the sun is shining quite nicely, at, lovely outside. It's beautiful. Uh, yesterday afternoon, it was not nice weather. It was not nice. It was just, let's, it, was te it was teeming down, wasn't it? It was grey, it was gloomy, it was cold. So your feelings might change a bit with the sun shining. It does lighten the mood, doesn't it? But think just not about how you're feeling in terms of the weather, but just generally how you are feeling at this time. And um, are you over here and feeling... Pretty much okay, fairly positive, thinking, yeah, it's tough, but we'll get through this, we'll be all right, we'll get through. Or are you, at the other end, feeling pretty low, fed up, numbers are going up, restrictions are coming in more, um, we're going towards the winter, and all the things that we normally do at that time, and the people we see and everything, Christmas and all that, it's just not going to happen in the same way, and it's feeling pretty low. So just think for a moment, for yourself, are you more here or are you more there? And uh, I'm the same for you at home to think this. So um, I'm going to ask in church, I can't see what you think there, but uh, if this is um, a one and this is a five, what number are you? Okay, so who would be a one? Oh, a few people. Two, okay. three, in the middle, four, five. Okay. So I don't know if anybody at home is, is saying uh, what number they are. No, they haven't yet, but they might, you might want to think about it and see. Um, but here in church, we have more people who are up the more positive end than the less positive end. Okay. Now... Don't think about yourself, think about the country, okay? The mood of the country. Is the mood of the country one, which is the more positive end, or is it five, the, the, the pits end, <laughs> okay? So um, let's think, who thinks the country is positive at one? Two? Three, four, five, still here. That's very interesting because it actually reflects the same as the earlier congregation, which that although here in church we're feeling a bit more positive, in the country we think the mood is actually quite low at the moment. And that's the same as it was for people at the earlier service here today. Not sure how it is for you at home, but you could always let us know and, um, you know, uh, text in, comment in if you want to on that. And I wonder in part if that's because you're here together and being able to come together, even without 
even be able to do so many of the things that we would normally do. And I think, you know, we're all missing things like being able to have coffee together after church, being able to talk together. You know, we're all missing those things hugely, but at least we can come together. And I think that that's one of the things that helps. I hope also, and trust also, and from what I know of you as well, I think this is true, that actually being people of faith helps us as well, greatly, because that helps us to see things in a bigger context as well. Well, how do we help when things are not looking so good and when uh, people around us um, are not feeling so good and when we ourselves are maybe not feeling so good as well? Today is Bible Sunday, and if we go back to the Bible, to, to what people in the Bible did, and remind us what they did, then this is it. They told the stories of faith. They told the story of their faith. If you go back and look, say, at um, Psalm 106, then it will tell you, they will go through the Bible story and remind themselves of how God took them out of slavery in Egypt. And it wasn't just having a rough time in Egypt, it was terrible. They were killing the baby boys. You know, this, this is grim, grim business in Egypt. God took them out of slavery in Egypt and took them on a journey with him through the wilderness. And they kept moaning and complaining and they kept turning away from God, but he kept reaching down and bringing them back to himself and helping them to be strong. And they remind themselves that how, although they lost faith at times and how they sort of turned away, God did not turn away from them. God kept faith with them and kept them strong and kept them together. That, of course, is the story through the Old Testament. Uh, but it's the same story in the New Testament, even more so, because in that story, we, which we tell all the time, we remind ourselves that God didn't just call, set, give people to do it. He sent his son himself into the world to bring us back to him and so that we could be kept strong and be kept faithful and be given the strength we needed. And through the Bible story that people retold the stories of Jesus, they reminded themselves how Jesus had overcome death itself and given them hope. So they told the stories of faith in the Bible and the early church did exactly the same and we do exactly the same now. We tell the story of our faith in the Bible in the uh, Old Testament and, the, New, and the, the Gospels and the story of the early church and we remind ourselves there have always been bad things which have happened but God has always kept faith with us and we brought us through. And that's what we need to do now. We need to continue telling the stories of faith. And the stories of faith do not end with the Bible times because this church here is part of our story of faith here in Beeston because there's been a church on this site for centuries. Frank will be able to tell you more. Uh, long before this church building, people have worshipped God here together. I was just looking across, there's a memorial just on the wall over there, and it talks, that's 16, 1695, I think. Well, that was before this building, uh, but there was a church here way before 1695, wasn't there, Frank? <laughs> so... We know that our story of faith here is a long-rooted one. And during that time, we know that there will have been wars, uh, there will have been famines when the harvest failed, people will have starved. It's a coal mining area, so we know that there will have been pit accidents and people suffering. If you go down the road to Holbeck Cemetery, you will see gravestones with lots and lots of names on them and many of those people are really, really young. They're babies, they're children, they're, they're, they're not all older people, they're, they're young. And they're all together in one grave because they were too poor to be able to buy a family grave. So this church would have been here 
during that poverty and suffering. And there will have been times when they faced illnesses, plagues, pandemics like this. So what we're suffering now is not unknown to the people who are part of our story of faith here. And God kept them strong and kept them faithful during the difficulties. So, because if they hadn't, we wouldn't be here today now. So, we are not going to give up now because of this virus. We will still tell the stories of faith, of the church, of the Bible, of our community. And we will keep strong, not just for ourselves, but also for our community out there. We will keep that faith. And when we individually feel a little bit like the pits, then we will support each other to be strong. We will help each other to be strong in faith too. So I pray, Lord, help us to remember your faithfulness to your people. Help us to keep telling our stories of faith. Help us to support each other and bring us through this time that we may once again sing your praise with joy. Amen. We turn now to our prayers of intercession, which Audrey is leading us in today. God of story and tradition. We give thanks for the Bible which teaches us, for all the prophets, priests, and kings who wrote it, for the Bible translators and interpreters who bring your word to us in the vernacular. Most of all, we thank you for the central figure, Jesus. God made flesh and is revealed to appreciate the resources we have today and to value Bible reading and Bible study so that we may know more about you and help us to live out our lives as you wish us to do. May your word be our light to guide our footsteps to where you are found. May your word be our strength when darkness threatens and when we are weak and helpless and feel overwhelmed. May your word be the power we need to live as servants. Lord, in your mercy, we hear our prayer. We pray for the church, entrusted with the responsibility to teach and to tell the story of Jesus. Help your church to find wisdom in your word and the result, inspiration, and strength to live it out. We praise you, Lord, that during this pandemic, more people than ever turn to worship, maybe not in person in church, but virtually. We have become more like a church without walls. May the church be the voice of hope at this time of polarization in our nation and despair. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for ourselves and the community we live in. You have called us to be your people, to follow where you lead, to be obedient and bring your good news wherever we may be. We think of the many families in our community who may suffer food poverty, and especially the children who are now on half-term holidays and miss their school, uh, school lunch. We thank you for the many people who try to uh, alleviate their suffering. So when we read the scriptures, may it inspire us into action and challenge us. So give us wisdom and grant us courage. 
The world tends us to believe that wisdom comes from human minds and to have faith in no other thing but themselves. This world tends us to believe to have control of our own destiny and to have no need of God. But we know the touch of Jesus in our hearts. So may we worship God and Him alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray especially for the lands of the Bible, countries like Iran and Iraq, for Jordan, for Syria, for Egypt, Israel and Palestine and Turkey. These are lands with conflicts and hatred and war. Lord God, we pray for peace and the healing of the nations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for hope and wholeness for the sick in body, mind, or spirit. Bring comfort in the time of suffering. Help us all to be good and caring neighbors and be instruments of your healing and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the recent departed. Pray especially for Julie Clarkson and her family, mourning the loss of Sylvia. We ask that you will comfort all those who mourn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We spend a little time now praying for one another. Look around you and pray for the people around you and for the people you love and think about. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you're able, please stand for the peace. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God, through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We make a sign of peace to those around us. Lord Jesus, you nourish us at the table of your word and the table of your sacrament. As we feed on you the bread of life, may we daily grow into your likeness. Amen. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. 
His dying and rising has set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you, who saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, and as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We bring before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Saviour of the world. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. We sit or kneel as we come to the Lord's Prayer. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God. body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life.
Let us pray. God of all grace, your Son, Jesus Christ, fed the hungry with the bread of his life and the word of his kingdom. Renew your people with your heavenly grace, and in all our weakness, sustain us by your true and living bread, who is alive and reigns with you now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Go now in peace, knowing that you have been born again not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.